Okay, so I saw this game suggested in a Facebook woodworking group that I'm in. They said on there, if you're a woodworker and you're not making these and you sell stuff in a market, then you're missing out on easy money. And I got to tell you, they were absolutely correct. I went ahead and made like three of these, took it to the market that I'm in every month, and I think I sold all three the very first day. So I made more, and it's probably my number one seller now. I at least sell one or two of them every market. I think a lot of people like them. You have the college kids that like it as a drinking game, and then you have the you know people that aren't so much into drinking games, but they go on vacation stuff, and it's a fun tabletop game. So I think it's enjoyed by a vast amount of people. I'm going to show you how I make mine. I'll link the general dimensions in the description. I don't have a drawing. I just wrote out everything. It's really simple to make. I think once you watch the video once, you'll have it. And you can tweak it any way you like. Um, I'll also have the tools and stuff that I use for it if you want to check that out. Last video, I asked for comments to support small businesses that make big impact. Well, I got one response. So this is going to make it very easy to choose. First, before I say the name, I just want to apologize if I butcher this name. I wasn't quite sure how to say it and they were closed when I was filming this so I couldn't really call and get the actual name. I want to shout out to Totalis LLC. They're located in Butler, Pennsylvania. They are a locally owned Boba Tea Cafe. They help their community by supporting as many small businesses as possible and in their shop they highlight 20 local vendors. I guess they have their their stuff in there and you can see it and they support them as well. Hopefully this gives them some free publicity. This video does well. And if you're ever in Butler, Pennsylvania, go check them out. Also, I'll have their website linked in the description so you can see what all they do from there as well. Hey, and again, since I got one response, if you know a small business, it's made a big impact, tell me who they are, where they're located, and what they've done, and I'll choose out of the comments, and I'll feature it in the next video. Okay, so... Here's the pieces you need to cut and what they're made out of. I use two by four, I use one by two from the big box store, and I usually use either inch and an eighth or inch and a quarter dowel, doesn't really matter. I try to stick with one or the other. Sometimes they're out of one of, one of them and I just choose the other. All right, so first the two by four, I'm gonna cut a 12 inch piece for the base. Then the one by two, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it 15 and a half inches long, and that's the top piece that it swings from. And then using the inch and an eighth, inch and a quarter dowel, I go ahead and I cut that 12 and a half inches long. Now this is the part I always forget, but it's the game piece board, the what you put the shot glass on or whatever. You don't have to have this, you just wanna play the game, but generally people like to have this with it. So that is just a regular piece of, uh, you can use like a uh, one, by, one by three or something like that. The dimensions I use is 14 and a quarter inches long and two and a half inches wide. So that's that's the game board piece for the shot glasses. Now this part is optional, but I tend to add a little bevel on the top of the game base piece and then a bevel on each end of the where the ropes swing from. You don't have to do that. I don't even set a measurement on the bevel. I just tilt the blade and I make them all the same for for that set that I'm making. So they don't all quite look exactly the same. They're pretty close. It's just not an exact measurement. And you don't even have to do that. You can leave it as is. It's up to you. Drilling the holes, I use my drill press. This is where having a drill press does come in handy. You don't have to have one for this, but it does help. First thing I do is I take one piece of each piece, one base, one dowel, one top piece, and one game board, and I mark where the holes are gonna be. From there, I can use my fence and my stop to set up each piece, drill all the holes for that piece and its mating pieces, and then I can switch out, set up the next one, drill all those holes, and so forth. Now the holes on this are pretty simple. Um, you're just gonna center whatever size dowel, so if you use an inch and eighth dowel, you're going to use an inch and an eighth Forstner bit and in the middle of the base and in the middle of the top piece, you're going to drill that hole there. 
For the holes on the dowel, I mark two inches from the base, not from the bottom of the dowel because it's going to glue in, but from the base up. So you're going to have to drill the hole in the base first, kind of put your dowel in there, measure up two inches, and that's where that hole is going to be. That's how I do it. You can do it however you want. And then you're going to need holes on the ends of the top piece where it swing, where the ropes swing from. And I just usually go about 3 8 inch in and pre-drill some small holes for the eyelets. My favorite, sanding. So real simple. Once I've drilled all the holes, everything's cut, I sand everything down. I don't sand the dowel. Maybe I should, but I don't. Anyways, I sand it all down up to 120 grit. I start at 80, go to 120. Pretty simple. To glue this project up, I use some Tight Bond Quick and Thick multi-surface glue. I like this using this sometimes because one, it dries quick and it dries clear. If you don't have this in your inventory, check it out. I'll link it, but it's good stuff. So the way I glue this up is a kind of a two-part way. First thing I do is I take the, the base and the dowel and I put the glue in the hole the inch and an eighth, inch and a quarter, whatever dowel you're using, hole. And I put the dowel in, I use a level, make sure it's all straight, and then I let it dry. Once that's dry, there's a little trick I use, it helps me. I do the top piece, same thing, I put glue in the hole, a little bit of glue on the dowel, I put the top piece in, and what you can do is you can lay it on a flat surface with your base, and that will make it parallel or whatever the wording is with your base so they're the same so it's not off off kiltered or anything like that it's the same just lay it down make sure it's flat and then once you set it up then you put your level on top make sure you have it level and then just let it set let it dry and that's really it on gluing it up i'm trying to get these ready for a market that i have today i saw that i only have three left so i went ahead and made three more these do sell every time i didn't want to run out I'll probably sell all six of them. All that's left is tying up the string and putting in your hooks and so forth. Um, it's real easy. Once you put your hooks in and your eyelets in, I use nylon like kite string. I tie them up with just some simple overhand knots and I burn the ends. And then I use one inch solid rings I buy them from Amazon. In a pinch for this video, I had to buy them from Tractor Supply. They're more expensive there. I'll link in the description the, the rings to use from Amazon. And they're really nice, high quality rings. And then I just tie the eyelet first. Then I go down, I pull the string tight around the ring. And once it's good and tight, I tie it up with overhand knots, cut it, burn it, and that's it. You don't want it too loose, you don't want it too tight, you'll get the gist. But that's, that's all there is to tying it up. Pretty easy, right? There's no reason not to be making these. Go ahead and make yourself about two or three of them. Take them to your market. See how they do for you. I sell mine between 35 40 bucks, depending on material. I am on the lower end of the spectrum. I do see these for $50 to $65. My opinion is kind of ridiculous. Anyways, I hope you all like the video. Y'all make sure you're staying safe out there. And most importantly... Well, okay, not most importantly. Staying safe is most importantly, but make sure you're having fun. I love building this stuff and have a blast doing it. Making the videos has been even more fun. I'll see you next time.